Hello and welcome to Chagas Facebook page and our Facebook Live video here tonight from Chagas Ballyhays in County Cavan. We're here in our forestry workshop and we're going to meet some of our students here tonight. Uh, but before we get to that, to just explain uh, what, what's coming up in the next couple of weeks, Chagas has seven land-based colleges around the country and we uh, deliver training in agriculture, equine, horticulture and here in Ballyhays we have courses on poultry production, pig production and forestry. And we're going to touch on some of these tonight. Uh, because it's Facebook, because it's live, we have a great opportunity for people to take questions. So we'd be delighted if you post them onto the Chagas Facebook page. And Declan here, who's behind the camera, is going to ask any of the questions towards the end of the, the, end of the, the video. The video is short tonight. It's only 20 minutes. So we'd love, love you to be able to stay until the end. And as I say, the students are here as well. So if you have any questions for the students, I'm sure they'd be delighted to, to answer those questions as the, as the video goes on and towards the end of the video. So. Before um, we get to talk to the students, the, the most important course or the biggest course that we have here is our level five certificate in agriculture. It's our, as I call it, our bread and butter course. We have 112 students that just started that course two weeks ago. They applied earlier in the year online at chagas.ie and they started two weeks ago and they've picked either dry stock or dairy production. So they're sitting in our class each day and practicals in the afternoon. And um, earlier today, we had one of those students uh, to come out of class out of practicals actually, Tori Steele, and we have a short video here of Tori and the, some of the conversation that I had with her. So Tori, just tell us about yourself. You've come down here to Ballyhays, you started a couple of weeks ago, but just maybe tell us about where, who you are and where you're from. Um, I'm Tori Steele and I'm from Milton and Donegal. I live on a dairy farm, 160 cows. Yes, and uh, you've been interested in farming and you're, have you got siblings? Have you anybody at home or are you going to become a farmer? Um, I have a younger sister, but she has an interest in farming, so hopefully I'll be the farmer. Very good, very good. So you started a couple of weeks ago. How's things been going here? It's been going good. I really like being out on the farm and doing all the practicals. I did grassland last week, so I really enjoyed it. Yeah, and your farm at home, it's a spring calving dairy herd, so is grass important at home? Yeah, grass is very important at home to keep everything going. Yes, okay. And tell us about, you have a couple of weeks done, and has there any, the balance between the practicals outside and the class, how do you find that? Um, yeah, we do a couple hours in the classroom a day and then we do a couple hours out on the farm a day, but I prefer being out in the farm. Okay, well a lot of our students would say that they prefer being out in the farm, but I suppose a lot of what you have to do in the classroom is important as well. So, And the teachers and technicians, and you've met loads of them at this stage? Oh, I've met so many. I have so many each day, but they're all lovely. Yes, very good. And they all love farming as well, probably no more than yourself. And tell me, your plans then, you're, you're just starting first year and... Maybe just tell us about secondary school first. Um, well, I went to the Royal and Prior and Rafo first, and then I came here a couple of weeks ago, and I hope to go on next year to do the dairy course as well. The, the dairy course, very good. And how you've come a long way from Donegal. That's where I, the county I come from, so I know it's a decent bit away. So you're, where are you living? I stay just in Ballyhays, the village, in a wee apartment. Oh, very good, good. And uh, also, you couldn't join us live tonight, so that's why we're doing the interview now. So you've actually, you're busy in the evenings? Uh, yeah, I have a job with a local farmer. I milk for him in the evenings. Very good. So you're in the college, you're farming in the evenings, and you also go back and home, presumably, and help at the weekends as well. Yeah, I help at the weekends when I go home and milk. Yeah, very good, very good. So that's great. Thanks for that, Tori. So one of the things I'd like to remind students of when they come here, it's not like secondary school. They come here and people are studying things that they're passionate about, things that they've really grown up with as, as kids and young adults. And they come here and we teach them about what they love. So it's very, very of enjoy experience for our students. They spend half the day in the class, half the day in practicals. And then in the spring, they'll go out and do work experience on farms. So very enjoyable. Once our students have finished first year, they have to make up their mind what they're going to do in second year. They have to do two years with us to, to get qualified young trained farmers. Uh, our students on that class have to make up their mind whether they're going to do crops and machinery, dry stock or dairy production. Uh, in particular, in the recent years, dairy production has been very popular here in the college. And we're going to talk to some of the students here shortly. But, but before we do that, I mean, we also build skills into our dairy course as well. Very, very important that we do that. 
And the one we're going to talk about now is grass production. Grass underpins all our production systems in this country. It's a cheap and feed that helps profitability on our farms. It hasn't been an easy year in farms. I, I, I would absolutely be the first to admit that, especially with the drought further south. We've been lucky here in County Cavan, um, and we've, we've had plenty of grass. It's not been a bad year for us, but I know this is a, a bad year for grass. But still, we teach that skill every week that the students are here on, on the course. And earlier today, Noel Prunty, our livestock technician, was actually out with the students uh, teaching that skill, and we'll just cut to that video now and see what they were at. So, uh, lads, so the first step in measuring grass, so um, many uh, half square metres in a hectare. 40,000 of these half square metres in each hectare. Yeah, so that's the first step in measuring, say, de getting the area. So, we call on the go and go. So, what's the next step that you need to calculate the uh, kilos? Dry matter of grass. Okay. So, how do you go about getting dry matter? Uh, yeah, it's easy to pull it in the oven and you cook it for 16 hours at 90 degrees. And way up whatever's left, and that's the dry map of the grass. Ah. The handy way for any farmers out there is it's on pasture base it's regularly. Yeah. Regular updates. So it's on pasture base, the farmer really wants to do it. So you cut your grass, yeah. the fork has a bag there, so you weigh that, and you get the weight of that, and the weight of the grass, and you're able to calculate the kilos of dry matter for pasture. Uh, what? Part of the paddock should you go for? Should you go for the heaviest part of your paddock when you're estimating? An average, an average. An average over the whole thing. So would you take a note? You take a couple of measurements here and there. Yeah, so. You get your average then. Do we have bag for the paddock? Yeah. So what's the reason why we're looking at about 25 grams for the bag? So what cover do you think is it reckoned on it if you're going to eyeball it? Roughly 1400. See that? 14, 14, 15. So, we'll know now when the way it's done. So, so, just go back to calculating it. So, you go back to how many half square meters is in the hectare? So, 40,000. Multiply by your dry matter, as Paul said, 0.14. 14% dry matter. About 300 grams there, minus the weight of the bag. So, we're talking 275. 270. 1,540. It's 1,540. It's not too far off there. No, or... Yeah. Then that's the average over there. That's the average. Right, lads, what... So, you would seen a shot of them out measuring grass today. Uh, one of the things I noticed on that video was the beautiful autumn colours. It's been a gorgeous September day here in the college. I've just come in from outside. And I hear the noise of harvesters as people busy cutting their silage and now that we have this dry weather. I've been working in Chagas since 2001. It's a fantastic place to work and some of the settings that we work in are amazing, whether it's Atlantic in Clonakilty and County Cork, or again South Kilkenny, or here in Ballyhays and our three agriculture colleges. One's nicer than the next. And again, you can see that the drumlins and the background of the trees that we have here in the college, a really, really beautiful place. I should point out that wasn't a dairy paddock. You might be admiring the lovely grass that we have there. That was actually one of our sheep paddocks that we've receded recently. So look, you were out there today. So just tell us about the, what you've been doing on the dairy course with regards to grass. Yeah, so every Wednesday we've been out measuring grass in the morning. So we go out and we have certain paddocks to measure for each group and we weigh the, weigh the grass and bring it in then and we put in all the covers in the pasture base then at the end of the day. And look, you're from a dairy farm. You finished first year and you were, you were on placement. Tell us about your placement. Yeah, so I was on placement with Edward Kenny in Wilkinson outside Navan. Uh, he milked 120, uh, 270 cows, sorry. And it was a fairly big farm. It was good to get the experience on a larger farm. And I'm just interested about the, the grass that you're doing here. And you mentioned pasture base. And we might talk to Stephen about that shortly. But that's not something you've done at home. And maybe tell us what you think of the value of it. Yeah, well, no, we don't do re really grass measuring at home. So it's good to learn how to do it here. And you can see what, what you have in front of you and how, what way you manage your grass. Pasture base is a good way of seeing your grass wedge. and. Well, we, yes, and, and we, we in Chagas want you to use pasture base. We, it's a really important tool, and do and, and you think at this stage, is it something, I know it's early days in the course, but it's something that you'll bring back? Oh, it would be, yeah. I think I bring it back to the home farm and measure grass more often and be more, look at it more often, like, than yeah. we do. Okay, look, thanks for that. So, Stephen, I know in that video you mentioned pasture base. We were talking about the moisture content of the grass. You mentioned that you find useful information on that website. 
Uh, yes, well, the pasture-based website has the moisture, the dry matter percentage on it, and uh, it has the average growth rates recorded around the country. Uh, you can go into your own province and your own county and check out what the grass is doing in that particular area. I noticed you're like myself, you have a strong accent. Where are you from, Stephen? Uh, I'm from up in Donegal, so I am. Yeah. And tell us about your placement. Uh, well, I've done a placement with Morris Graham. He's in St. Johnson, Donegal. Uh, he's milking 400 cows, all spring calving. Uh, so plenty of work about it. Yeah, and, and that work, like that's a, a big part of dairy farming. I'm not sure, that, did you get any, did you learn much from that work with that number of, huge number of cows? Oh, well, I learned a lot about calf rearing and disease control. Uh, obviously, with such a large amount of animals about, biosecurity is very important. Uh, you didn't want no scour or anything getting into your calves, and it would have been a large uh, hut for them. And is there anything else? I know you're early days in the course, I've said that, but is there anything else you've learned in the last couple of weeks since you've started here? Uh, well, there's a large focus put on the breeding of the cattle. Uh, that we've looked at the EBAs and choosing bulls for use of AA and uh, hormone treatments to uh, try and get non cycling cows to tighten up calving intervals and uh, things like that. Okay, thanks for that, Stephen. I'm here on my left, you have Cahill. Just uh, Cahill, you're not from a dairy farm. I'm, I'm interested about that. So maybe just tell us about your back, where you're from and your background. I'm from Mayo, and my grandfather has a small suckler farm, low input, low output. So back when I was 13 years old, I started relief milking in the area and grew bigger and bigger, and I got great interest in the dairy industry. Yes, so your, your plans then, like you're doing the dairy course now, but you have plans as well. You have an idea of what you'd like to do. Preferably now I'd like to go on and do the level six or level seven, sorry, in Moorpark. Hopefully become a dairy farmer myself, have my own farm or even farm management. So lots of possibilities afterwards. Yes, very good. Thanks for that. So um, that's, we'll just leave it there on our, on our dairy course. So another very large part of what we do here in the, the college is, is the part-time course and distance courses. So again, when I was outside, I noticed our part-time students driving into the car park tonight. There's as many students here at night as we'd have during the day. Uh, and our distance students come in one day a month and again, come from all over the region to, to do, their, their become qualified young farmers, and which is a requirement for, for their chosen career. I'm just joined now by Parik, who's also on our dairy course. But interestingly, he came to the dairy course from the part-time course. So Parik, maybe just tell us about yourself, uh, your, where you're from and, and how you come to do the, the part-time course. Yeah, so my name is Parik County. I come from Pitil. Um, I have a background in dairy farming. Um, the reason I went for the, the part-time course, I was working full-time um, two years ago. I um, wanted to maybe get a bit more knowledge into the, the dairy background, so I decided to come on board with the, the part-time course. And I, I'm interested in that because, because you were working, like you had a, you had a job in the region, which, which again, I suppose at the time was probably very precious. I know they're more plentiful now, but even when you come to rural Ireland, it, it's a precious thing. Uh, did the part-time course help you in making a decision? Did it give you any confidence in what you wanted to do? Absolutely, yeah. Give me a, a better idea, a better scope of what I wanted to do. Um, with the part time, it was very flexible, two evenings a week, so I could maintain my full time job. Um, but definitely give me a taster to come on board with the full time course, then, as kind of a stepping stone into it. Yeah, so you've, you've left your job, your full time course here now. You're going to be doing placement on, on the course. And, and your plans then for the future? Uh, plans for the future is to maybe modernize our own home farm, take what I've learned in Bally Hills, bring it home with me expand and try to make the home farm more profitable. Okay, very good. Thanks for that. So next, we're going to move on to our forestry course. The forestry course is something we're very proud of in Ballyhays. We've been delivering for here for 30 years. We celebrated that last year. And uh, you meet loads of people that work in the industry. And inevitably, if you ask them where did they start out their career, they were students in Ballyhays. And that happens time and time again. Because we're the only centre in Chagas that offers full-time advanced and full programmes in forestry, we have students coming from all over the country, and you'll see that when we, when we talk to the students. As I said, with all our courses, there's a vocational aspect to them. We like to keep our courses practical. We like to focus on the skills, and forestry is no different. They spend a lot of time, half their time, learning about skills. This week, even though they've just started the course, they've been doing an intensive uh, chainsaw training this week and they've been out in sight and earlier today um, we were out on site with the students and 
we're going to cut to that video now where Adrian Steele, uh, or Adrian was with the students today and showing them the chainsaw skills. So we'll just cut to that video now. Right, lads, what we have in front of us, straightforward, normal, standard felling cut. Um, tree has been risk assessed for dangers. Our escape routes are clear. And we're just going to do a normal, standard felling cut on this, okay? So what I'm looking for you is that we're putting in our sink cut. Bye. So in around the quarter is good. Sink cut in nice and tidy. That that point meets perfect, okay? Normal, standard felling cut on the back and then leave her in and tip the tree over. Is that okay? Yep. Who wants to do this one? Brian, good man. Okay, lads, all I'll ask you is just step back behind that you can see enough, but yet are safe. Okay, that was a fantastic video. We actually really enjoyed making that video today. I just remind our viewers that, that Chagas isn't just forestry, we also have equine, we have also horticulture. So if you choose one of those courses, you're going to be doing skills, they might be chainsaw operation, but you're going to be doing skills on horses or skills in horticulture. So again, that's a focus on all our courses. We like to focus on skills and have a balance between class and being outside to learning those skills. I'd also like to remind you that we're able to take questions tonight. We'd be delighted if you post the questions on the Chagas Facebook page and Declan will answer those questions later on. I just wanted to correct myself, it was Adrian Smith from Chainsaw Ireland that's, that's doing the course there. And, and again, we use contractors, very specialised contractors for some of our training courses here. And we're delighted that he facilitated us today uh, following that. So, Brian, you're from County Cork. Yeah, just tell us where you're from. It's a big county, no more than Donegal. I'm from Glamour, County Cork. Yes, and you're actually staying with us? I am during the week, I am, or during the week I am. Yeah. Yes, so it's a residential college here, so we also have accommodation for, for our students. So, Brian, you're, you're actually going out this week doing chainsaws. We just seen, seen one of the particular skills there today, but you've done a lot this week. So tell us what you started off with on, on Monday. So on Monday, we sort of started off learning the basic features of a chainsaw, the safety features, how it works, uh, what to look out for that could be dangerous. So uh, broken chains, uh, leaking oil, fuel, any of that general stuff. And you didn't actually start a chainsaw the, the first day at all. It was, yeah. Second day we started. It was the second day we started. Yes, yes. And you mentioned uh, it's dangerous, and you mentioned identifying hazards, and you've mentioned some of the hazards there. Um, what sort of we actually couldn't recognise you in the video. So, what, how do you mitigate those hazards? What sort of things have you done to to stop them causing accidents? Well, before you start any work inside a forest, you must fill out a risk assessment form, which is literally everything that could possibly go wrong in that particular patch of area, and has to be written down and recorded so that if something does happen you can say it's been seen already or avoided and avoid or plan to avoid. Yes, yes. and uh, you've seen the, the trainer there, Adrian, that was the first thing he said, the risk assessment on the tree. So just to see there's, there's different ways presumably a tree can grow. Multiple different ways. Yes, and, and fall. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that was very interesting. And just as a curiosity, what, what, what brought you to forestry? What do you think you want to do with yourself? Well, the end game plan is to go into the forestry machine operations if I can. And I kind of got the, the feeling for it from my grandfather because he was driving machinery in Germany and in Ireland. So ever since I sat into one, I've wanted to drive one. So Yes, and that's something we're going to come back to tonight. So thanks for that, Brian. 
uh, just have two lads from Longford here, so in the middle of the country. So, um, John, you just might tell us about yourself and, and where you come from and why you've decided to come to do forestry. Well, uh, my father's a forestry contractor, uh, like with the forwarders and harvesters, and we're farmers as well, beef farmers. And um, well, what I'd like to do in the future is I'd like to have my own for like machines as well and do a bit of tree surgery and planning like from start to finish like planting to planting to replanting again like and do you think that forestry is something that comp can complement farms what what have you any views on that uh yeah it would complement farms as well like there's like there's a renewable or not Agri-forestry. Yes, that's something that you could implement as part of your farm, possibly. Yeah. And yeah. um, well, it's where the spacing and the like, where you could keep sheep, where you have the forestry, yes. and uh, you could have both. Yeah. And and this week, like you're only a couple of weeks into the college. Have you done any more like chainsaws? It's a very enjoyable week. The weather's beautiful out there, uh, which it doesn't always be in September. Is there anything else you've done this week that you've or since you've started the course here that you've enjoyed? Well, just the tree identification and uh, just learning about uh, yeah, the different types of trees. Yeah, yeah. the different okay. types of trees in Ireland. Yeah, thanks, John. And Dara, you're another Longford man, but you didn't know each other before you came here. So maybe just briefly, you're, where you're from? Uh, I'm Dara O'Toole. I'm from Jamar, County Longford. Yes, and why, uh, the same question for you. Why, why have you picked forestry? Um, the reason I picked forestry is because um, from reading articles on the newspaper and social media now, you can see that forestry is getting bigger each year. Um, there's more, the grants are getting better for forestry and all, and um, more people are planting, so there, there's bound to be more jobs in the industry. Yes. And you've been in class as well, and you've, you've done the identifications. Anything else that you've done uh, since you've started here? I know it's only a couple of weeks. Um, just tree identification and the environment around us and all and looking after. Yes, I mean, if it's not done properly, it's not going to be sustainable. It has to be done properly. So that's a very good point and that's something that's part of your course. And again, if you, you have plans, like you're only young, young lads, so have you any idea what you'd like to do with yourself? Um, I'd like to further my education and use this course as an entry route to Warford IT to do forestry there. Yeah, very good. And that's something I didn't mention, but progression is an important part of our college. All our Tagus colleges where you can move into higher education. So thanks for mentioning that. So we've talked to our students. Uh, the, the last session tonight, I'm just going to move over here to, to, to my left. So I'll walk over there. Well, as part of the forestry course, uh, operators, for, operators for forwarders and harvesters, they, they're a scarce commodity right across the world. And our sector, the forestry sector, has worked very, very closely with our Department of Agriculture to recognize the shortage of the, the skilled operators in this area. And, and very recently, we've invested, with the help of our department, in a simulator. It's a very, very important part of, of machinery training, particularly when you talk about expensive machines like harvesters, like forwarders. Uh, and it's not just like getting into a car. It's not just like getting into a tractor. These machines are complicated. And Obviously, the, the, the simple way to start people off is on a simulator. So, Martin, you're on our level fives just to tell us about yourself. Yeah, uh, Mark McCann from Ballyshannon, Kerry Donegal. Yes, so all the way, student from Cork and a student from Donegal. So, you've, you've been working away in this machine since you've come here. Did you have no background at all? In it? I have no background in harvesting or no background in forestry. Well, I have some uh, land planted, but um, I have no background in contracting or and just tell us about the, 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 what you've been at in this machine the last couple of evenings. Um, well, it basically shows you the layout of the machine and uh, the different tasks that um, you can do with this machine. And, and you're actually, you just start off with on a, a forwarder. You've, you've got essentially the controls beside you exactly the same. Same as the as actual harvester. And um, then this machine does uh, forwarder and harvesting both. Yes. So... Yeah, as you can see, and you have the screen here in front of you, and you have the, the joysticks to your, to your right and left, and then the screen here uh, gives you an idea of... of Any of the tasks that you have to do, you progress on to different stages. And, and what's it like? Um, very complicated, and you can see why the simulator is of benefit, um, because no one would let you on a machine that's costing uh, four and five thousand, four hundred thousand. 
Yes, that's for sure. So, I mean, where would you start? Yeah, um, so it's a great experience to yes. use this machine. Yeah, very good. That's great. Thanks for that, Martin. So that's a, a, a snapshot of our students tonight. So we're, we're done, but uh, I suppose, Declan, if you have any questions there you'd like to, to share with me and maybe some of our students, if we need them, we can get them back here to answer them. Yes, John, thanks very much for that. Just a few questions that came in earlier. Let's say, what, what can people expect when they come to the College Open Days? And you mentioned they're starting next week on the 4th and they run to the 12th in the seven colleges around the country. So what can ex people expect when they arrive? Yes, our Open Days are similar. Over the next two weeks, they run, uh, our runs on Friday week on the 5th of October. So students come in the morning and we organize uh, staff or other students to take them on tours of the college to see the various enterprises, to see, in our case, to see this forestry workshop and to meet some of our students and, and see what goes on in our course. Um, we have our farms in, and our horticulture units in our colleges, so it's great to be able to come out and see them, see animals, see grass, see buildings, see the pandolin facilities, see all those things that we have in the college. So it's a great opportunity to come out and see that. Then we also have talks because you have you have questions about the courses that you'd like to do. How do you apply? Maybe that's something you may come back to Declan. Um, what are the courses? What are the levels? What's the progression that one of our students mentioned? They're all things that we can answer. We'll have presentations. We'll have staff available to be able to answer any questions you have about courses. So if you're remotely interested in coming to do courses with Chagas, land-based courses, outside, vocational, a, a really good work-life balance of, and, and lifestyle, come and talk to us about our courses. And also, it's a great opportunity to meet the current students and get their viewpoint on college life. Yeah, that's the litmus test for, for me as a principal. What do our students say? Uh, one of my favorite times of the year is when we read back to the student survey. It's probably my most nervous time as well. But what do the students, would they recommend it to a friend? Uh, and we have a very, very high response rate on that. And let the students tell you what it's like here. Don't take my word for it. And you mentioned about the application process. And I say, what's involved if somebody wants to get involved in either a part-time or full-time Chagas course? So I suppose full-time is the obvious one to answer. So we have, our courses are, are vocational courses. They're not higher level courses. So you don't apply through the CEO. You apply directly to Chagas. So you go on to the website chagas.ie, you go into education and you look for apply online. And then you have a list of all the colleges, all the courses. And, and you pick up the applications there. They're, they're not open at the minute, but they'll be open in November. So once the applications are up, you can apply straight away. And then we'll communicate uh, online via email with the students and we take it from there. And you, you're, you come in the course next autumn when, when they start. Our part-time courses are slightly different. Our distant courses are slightly different. So you contact your local Chagas Center, your local Chagas College, your local Agriculture College, and they will put your name on, on our list, and then we contact students when these courses start and uh, to communicate directly with them. I suppose one thing about is coming to college, people are looking for future careers. What opportunities are out there for young graduates that leave the college? What opportunities are there for them to you know, make, a, make a living? That's a good question. Like the, some people would say these are challenging times, uh, the environment, the sustainability side of what we do, it's, it's, it's a balance. We have to do whatever we do, it has to be sustainable. We have Brexit, uh, there's a lot of negative press over Brexit. But, but as, a, as an industry, it's been there since this country has been here uh, and there's work in the industry and, and that's, that's the case. So it doesn't matter really what level you want to get into it. If you want to work, some of these lads were saying tonight they want to become farmers or farm managers. Uh, some of them want to work in forestry uh, as, as contractors. Some of them want to operate machines. And that goes for all the different uh, horticulture, equine, uh, agriculture, forestry. It doesn't matter. There's a job there for you. If you want to become and do your degree, again, we mentioned that tonight, you can go and be a professional in the industry working for some of the co-ops or feed companies, meat factories. It's endless. The, the, the careers are there. If you're passionate about what, what we, we teach here, you'll find a job in it. So I'd just like to remind those that, that are with us online, if you have any questions, do please post them, and I'll ask them on your behalf be, before we go off air. And even if you want to ask a question off air, we, we'll ensure to answer that. I suppose one thing, um, John, you mentioned was placement. How big a factor is placement within the course, and what are the main benefits you see to that? So when you come to a college like this, I keep repeating about, skills been, been a, a foundation to what we do here. But you can't become proficient uh, in what you do with us. We can show you how to do it, but you're not going to be a good chainsaw operator because you've done a course with Adrian. 
uh, for a week, you have to go out and practice. And that's what placement offers. It offers our students, whether they're on an ag course in first year going out to placement, or whether they're on a, a forestry course going out with a forestry contactor. When you go out in placement, you're taking with you what we've taught, hopefully the best practice, and you're applying that. You're actually going out, repeating the skills in a workplace situation, and to bring up your proficiency level to a point where you're going to be competent at those skills. Uh, some of our advanced courses then, you're really looking at management. So we, we step it up, we call it uh, a ladder. We move into level six. We want students to learn about management, to understand figures, to understand breeding. We mentioned that earlier, uh, to understand profit, to be able to drive on the, the enterprise that you're involved with uh, and to be able to, to focus on, on making good management decisions. So we learn those things on placement. We learn those things with our, our, our hosts, whether it's forestry, horticulture, equine or agriculture. Excellent. And finally, where can people find more information on, on the courses and also the upcoming college days? Open yeah, days. well, uh, after this video is over, you've kindly put uh, the, the dates for, for the, the open days. They'll come up at the end of the video. But also chagas.ie. You'll get all the information on our open days on chagas.ie. So it's, that's the, the sensible place to go. The Facebook page is interesting too. The college is a Facebook page, and you can see what our students are at each week. So I just want to fin finish, Declan, thanks for, uh, to, to Noel, our, our technician here today, and, and Adrian from Chainsaw Ireland for their time uh, making the videos. And most of all, to thank our students, uh, our dairy, our agriculture, and our forestry student uh, for the time that they've given me today. I, I, I said to them that they're going to inspire some of the people watching this video. And again, you believe our students, you mightn't believe what I have to say. So thanks for, uh, for them. Uh, and really to, uh, to thank Declan as well. I know he's behind the camera here, but I mean, we can't do these little events if we don't have technical backup and Declan McArdle who's behind the camera uh, is very good to support us. Uh, so come to the open days but most of all come to the Ballyhays open day it's on uh, Friday the 5th of October uh, starting from 10am we'd be delighted to talk to you and, and wish you all the best. Good night.